filmed weekly at the Blue Moon Flying Swan Restaurant. You are now watching The Chow. Right, man, episode uno. So I know that you and me are both very excited about this dog just Benedict Cumberbatch, man, looks insane in the trailers. Everything I've seen, guy looks on point. He looks very Doctor Strange. Yes, he does. Something that just came out in the last couple days is that he's actually playing a second role. Player. Spoiler alert. So if you don't want to be spoiled, just skip forward and you'll be good to go. But he doesn't do the voice, he only does the motion capture, but he does the motion capture for definitely the biggest villain, the arch nemesis of Doctor Strange from the comics, Dormammu. So it's like, you're saying motion capture like the, um, like the Gollum Lord of the Rings thing? They're looking for somebody to do it, but it's a character they'll probably bring back, just in case, right? Now the crazy thing is, he's gonna go into this other dimension, Doctor Strange. He's gonna encounter this thing, and it's supposed to be more like an entity, but it'll probably have sort of like a human fist in it, right? And that's Dormammu, but it's gonna be him to him. <laughs> that's it. If anybody can pull it off, it's better than Cumberbatch. This man has been so underrated for so many years, and then all of a sudden he's showing and proving, and everybody wants a piece of this guy, and now he's gonna show and prove big time. Now that we know Doctor Strange is gonna be in Avengers Part 3, Whoa. the new, new, new news is that you... Wait, spoiler alert again. Oh, for real? Yeah. Rodai, thank you All for right. catching me on that spoiler one. Spoiler alert again. Yeah. We bring it to you first. The guy that plays his manservant in the comics, they've switched it up. They're gonna make sure there's not a racial stereotype going on. Uh -huh. He's gonna be a legit on the same level sorcerer. In fact, a guy who studied longer, so might be sort of above strange, maybe not in potential, but above strange in like training. Okay. Okay? And so he's definitely going to be a hero, I think, of this story to some degree, too. And we're going to see him in Avengers 3. What These Avengers think? movies are insane, man. Keep up, DC! Side note, how cool would it be for Ryan Reynolds' as Deadpool to show up in the new Logan movie for the cameo? Could that happen? It's oh, funny. I want it to happen it's so funny. bad! It's tied universe. It's what? the kind of thing where like, we will definitely see, at some point soon enough, Deadpool come into something else. But I feel like this Logan movie, they wanted to close it out in such a way that it's connected to everything else. Okay, it definitely ties to Days of Future Past, the after credit scene. They want to keep it separated enough that it feels like its own thing and it's kind of close. To get back to Doctor Strange for a sec, a lot of the villains are very kind of like, you know, otherworldly or other dimensional kind of stuff like that, right? Or other sorcerers when it comes to Doctor Strange. So we already know that we've got Mordo in this movie, who's always a villain in the comics, but he starts good. So definitely this first movie, he'll be good the whole way through. There's a possibility that we get an idea that he might go bad eventually, okay. right? The next thing we're gonna talk about, here's the thing. I think if you watch this show more than two, three times, it's gonna be obvious some things about me and Ara here. Yeah. It's gonna be obvious that Ara is definitely a huge Walking Dead fan. It's probably gonna become pretty obvious that I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You're gonna get an idea sort of, of what our specialties are. So the next thing we're definitely gonna talk about too is The Walking Dead. Oh, best, y'all. Oh, special oh, delivery. Oh, oh, oh. Garlic chili prawns, oh, wow. one salad, and chicken chow mein. Very nice. nice. Look at the chow, baby. Ah, hold on, Jason. You gotta tell us what you uh, what you read this week. Oh, this week I'm reading a book by Jeff Lemire and Danny Newitt. All right. It's called The Descendant. It's ill. Descendant, so ill, so good. It's like, who's that Who's that guy that, uh, he's a genius and he's in a wheelchair? Stephen Hawking. It's like that. Stephen <laughs> Hawking. <laughs> Anyways, it's dope. It's like, I hope you guys enjoy your meal. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah
everybody on board yes. with The Walking Dead is so on point and on board together collectively to just F with the audience's mind <laughs> each and every single episode. We hadn't seen a new Walking Dead episode in like six or seven months. Season six, part two, the cliffhanger at the end, our crew, they meet up with the badassest badass of the badasses that we've seen so far, Negan. Negan makes the governor seem like a saint. I was gonna say. Like, he makes him seem like Mickey Mouse. It's unbelievable. This guy comes in, the way they completely shut everybody's hopes and wishes and dreams down, like, uh-uh, it is not gonna end well, no matter what you think. That's basically how we left off the second half of uh, season six. Season seven, episode one is gonna go down in history as one of the most grotesque, brutal, intensely insane episodes ever. And from a comic book reader like yourself, it's sticking true to the graphic novel, man. For me, Walking Dead sometimes has gone that direction where it was like, I don't mind if you change a couple things, but there's certain things I wanna see and hold true. Cause I definitely have read right up to before who we're gonna talk about in a sec, The Whispers. So right before The Whispers came on point, that's where I stopped reading. So they've definitely changed a whole bunch of stuff. They've got characters that never existed, like Daryl and his brother. Daryl being a fan favorite, never in the comics. It was really dope that they killed Glenn and that they killed him exactly how he died in the books. Cause I tell you, honestly, it's a black and white comic. Oh yeah. So when you read this piece, there's not a whole bunch of blood and guts. Even when they show blood and guts, it's still just black and white. You read this and you turn the page and you see Negan for the first time bring out Lucille and give the smack to Glenn and he hits Glenn so hard that first time his eye just pops out and you know he's dead. Oh my god, it looks so nasty. But, I mean, kudos to the special effects crew because that looked the realest you would ever think it would look if your eyes popping out of your damn head. I think in certain moments they knew that the graphics in the comic were so crazy and so good that they had to follow it. Like when they showed the governor's heads in the aquarium. Mm -hmm. That's sort of what made certain moments where it's like, you could just tell a story about the apocalypse no matter what it was, be it zombies or some kind of virus that takes everybody out. But the interest is the idea of how weird the humans get. I think definitely where you show people starting to now give in to their eccentricities and their weirdness and stuff like that, that's where like Walking Dead really wins. There were so many people that were like, they, people were shook for days and days after this episode. You know, and it only aired recently. I, I was reading forums, I was reading people's Facebook statuses, people saying, I can't work today, this week has been horrendous, I can't function. But the biggest thing that people said was that The Walking Dead went too far because you kept hearing crunk, crunk, crunk of just these dudes' heads getting bashed in to pulp. I'm talking pulp. Did it go too far? You think they went too far? Because it was it's staying true to the book. And that's the thing, you're watching a zombie show, dude. Like, I know that we've all become quite numb to these ideas, but zombies straight eat people alive and they just show regularly. Like It's funny, because if, if they would have gone up and unloaded 24 rounds into these people's heads, right. everyone would have been like, oh, that's fine. It's the bat. But it's the bat. It's the back boy, squish, squish, squish. And I tell you this, they're so smart. And you know how many kids or and adults are gonna try to, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Negan with a bat. This Halloween, next Halloween, Halloween after that. If you have a choice between Rick and Negan, you're gonna have that bat with that, you know, the barbed wire around or whatever. Like that episode, I think it set the bar and a reset for a whole new realm of possibilities for this show. Now, you know, any, anything is, uh, is, is up for debate, man. It, uh, all bets are off. Who knows what's gonna happen next? Cheers, good time to your uh, daddy. That's right, dude. Ciao. Ciao.